Hello, this is John Paul Walshire reporting for itsfoss.com. In November of 2017, I interviewed Jim Hall about the history behind the Free DOS project. Today I'm going to tell you how to install and use Free DOS. Please note I'll be using VirtualBox 5.2.16 on Solus Linux. I use Solus as the host operating system for this tutorial because it is very easy to set up. One thing you should keep in mind is that Solus' software center contains two versions of VirtualBox, VirtualBox and VirtualBox Current. VirtualBox is modified for the Linux LTS kernel and VirtualBox Current is for the Linux Current kernel. Step 1. Create new virtual machine. Once you open VirtualBox, press the New button to create a new virtual machine. You can name it whatever you want. I just use free DOS. You can use the label to specify what version of free DOS you are installing. You need to make sure that the correct type and version of the operating system is selected. It should read other and DOS. Now click next. Step 2. Select memory size. The next dialog box will ask you how much of the host computer's memory you want to make available to free DOS. The default is 32 megabytes. Don't change it. Back in the day, this would be a huge amount of RAM for a DOS machine. If you need to, you can increase it later by right clicking on the virtual machine you created for free DOS and selecting Settings and then System. Step 3 Create Virtual Hard Disk. Next, you'll be asked to create a virtual hard drive where free DOS and its files will be stored. Since you haven't created one yet, just click Create. The next dialog box will ask you what hard disk type you want to use. The default virtual box disk image works just fine. Click Next. The next question you'll encounter is how you want the virtual disk to act. Do you want to start small and gradually grow to full size as you create files and install programs? Then choose Dynamically Allocated. If you prefer that the virtual hard drive, VHD, is created full size, then choose fixed size. Dynamically allocated is nice if you don't plan to use the whole VHD, or if you don't have very much free space on your hard drive. Keep in mind that while the size of a dynamically allocated VHD increases as you add files, it will not drop when you remove files. I prefer dynamically allocated but you can choose the option that serves your needs best and click Next. Now you can choose the size and location of the VHD. 500 megabytes should be plenty of space. Remember, most of the programs you'll be using will be text-based, thus fairly small. Once you make your adjustment, click Create. Step 4. Attach the ISO file. Before we continue, you will need to download the free DOS ISO file. You will need to choose CD-ROM Standard Installer, this one right here. Once the file has been downloaded, return to VirtualBox. Select your virtual machine and open the settings. You can do this by either right-clicking and selecting Settings, or by selecting the virtual machine and clicking Settings. Now click the Storage tab. Under Storage Devices, Select the CD icon. It should say empty next to it. In the attributes panel, on the right, click on the CD icon and select the location of the ISO you just downloaded. Typically, after you install a operating system on VirtualBox, you can delete the original ISO file. Not with FreeDOS. You need the ISO file if you want to install applications via the FreeDOS package manager. I generally keep the ISO file attached to the virtual machine in case I want to install anything. If you want to do that, you can make sure that you tell FreeDOS you want to boot from the hard drive each time you boot up because it defaults to the attached CD slash ISO file. If you forget to attach the ISO, don't worry. You can do so by selecting devices on the top of your FreeDOS virtual machine in window. The ISO files are listed under optical drives. Step 5. Install FreeDOS. 
Now that you've completed all the preparations, let's install FreeDOS. First, you need to be aware of a bug in the most recent version of VirtualBox. If you start the virtual machine that we just created and select the install to hard disk when the FreeDOS welcome screen appears, you'll see an unending scrolling mass of machine code. I've only run into this issue recently and it affects both the Linux and Windows version of VirtualBox. To get around this you need to make a simple edit. When you see the FreeDOS welcome screen, press tab. Make sure that the install the hard drive option is selected. Type the word raw and hit enter. The free DOS installer will then start. The first part of the installer will handle formatting your virtual drive. Once formatting is complete, the installer will reboot. When the free DOS welcome screen appears again, you will need to re enter the raw comment you used earlier. Make sure that you select yes on all of the questions of the installer. One important question that doesn't have a yes or no answer is what free DOS packages do you want to install? The two options are base packages or full installation. Base packages are for those who want a DOS experience most like the original MS-DOS. The full installation includes a bunch of tools and utilities to improve the DOS experience. At the end of the installation you will be given the option to reboot or stay on DOS. Select Reboot. Step 6. Set up networking. Unlike the original DOS, free DOS can access the internet. You can install new packages and update the ones you already have installed. In order to use networking, you need to install several applications in FreeDOS. First, boot to your freshly created FreeDOS virtual machine. At the FreeDOS selection screen, select Boot from System Hard Drive. Now, to access the FreeDOS package manager, type fdimples. You can navigate around the package manager with the arrow keys and select categories or packages with a spacebar. From the networking category, you will need to install FDNet. The FreeDOS project also recommends installing MTCP and WGET. Hit tab several times until OK is selected and hit enter. Once the installation is complete, type reboot. Now boot into your system hard drive. If the networking installation is successful, you'll see several new messages at the terminal listing your network information. Sometimes the default VirtualBox setup doesn't work. If that happens, close your FreeDOS VirtualBox window. Right-click your virtual machine and select Settings. Then click Network. The default VirtualBox network setting is NAT. Change it to Bridged Adapter. It should work now. Step 7. Basic Usage. Common Commands. Now that you've installed FreeDOS, let's look at a few basic commands. If you have ever used the command prompt on Windows, you should be familiar with some of these commands. And some of them are very similar to ones used on Linux. The first one you should be aware of is the update method for FreeDOS. Type in FDNPKG space update and hit enter. It looks like there are several updates including for DOS zip. The dir command displays the contents of the current directory. It works very much like ls in Linux. The cd command allows you to change the directory that you are currently in. Copy allows you to copy a file. The edit command allows you to create and edit files. 
The type command allows you to display the contents of a file. You can find more basic DOS commands on itsfoss.com. Running a program. Running programs on FreeDOS is fairly easy. When you install an application with the fdimples package manager, be sure to note where the .exe file of the application is located. This is shown in the application details. To run the application, you generally need to navigate to the application folder and type the application's name. Navigate to c colon backslash fed and type fed. Sometimes an application such as Pico is stored in the bin folder. These programs can be called up from any folder. If you run into any problems that this tutorial doesn't cover, don't forget to visit the home of FreeDOS, freedos.org. Have you ever used FreeDOS? What tutorials would you like to see on its FOSS in the future? Please let us know in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, please take a minute to share it on social media, Hacker News, or Reddit.